she looked the best that I'd ever seen her, even though she was so desperately ill. Um, she, she had an inner glow to her. It seemed to me as though she was ready to meet her maker. Looking back, I know that she did the best she could, and she, and she was all, made, always made sure that she looked after her kids and gave them the best that she could. So even though a part of her lives on in me, and my character, and how I've become because of her influence, I know that one day I'll see her again. I think one of mum's mum's first memory that she that she told us about was um, how excited her mother was running down the steps one day, and mum was only uh, only two, maybe three years old, and she knew that this was something really really special, and she was really um, a bit anxious about why her mother was so excited because it wasn't quite normal for her. And she was hugging this man in the street, and it was her father. It was mum's father coming home from the war. Her husband George was her neighbour and lived up the hill. I think mum thought that my father was good marriage prospects because he was the only remaining son and, and was supposed to inherit the farm, the dairy farm. Um, but quite apart from that, they liked each other a lot. Um, and I, th I think they were really in love. I'm sure, I mean, it was hard to catch her. You could never get her because she was always here, always there, never in the same place twice. I, there's no question that her love for her family kept her motivated. She was determined to, to live as long as she could, just to watch over them and make sure that they were okay and to be there if you know, they needed her. I think mum's life came to revolve around her children. Yeah, she's always there. She annoyed you when she got there, but she, she was always there. <laughs> when she, she was first diagnosed, um, that word cancer, has a horrible sound to it. I think she felt relatively healthy for quite some time. Um, the actual illness caused by the cancer took some time to come to the fore. The last week she couldn't eat. Her mouth and her throat was all ulcerated and she couldn't eat and she couldn't get off off the couch, she couldn't, she couldn't move, and she was in incredible pain. Give up just wasn't in mum's lexicon. <sighs> no way. She grabbed it by the balls and she gave it a right old shake. When I went to visit her, I couldn't believe that it was mum. <laughs> because she looked so so frail and so sick but she squeezed my hand so I know that she knew I was there because I said hello and she squeezed my hand because I was holding her hand and when I told her that we were all there with her she she gave us a little wave she couldn't talk and she couldn't even smile but she could give us a wave so she knew that we were there with her And I think that probably meant more to her than anything else. And that's what means most to me is that she knew we were there with her. She was strong and now it was time for her to rest. And she died the next afternoon. She was a good woman. She had a hard life. She was a go-getter. I never recall a time when she wasn't full of life. She was just an active person that enjoyed life. She was, like I said, she's a feisty number and she was never going to give in without a fight. 
She was strong and she was brave and she was courageous and she was annoying and irritating and she was wonderfully human. She wasn't perfect, but she was wonderful.